it's interesting that um, we can get lost in something that, I mean, you had mentioned, you had mentioned, for example, the um, apprenticing with your dad, mm -hmm. with the ayahuasca, and how even when I'm mentioning it, right, there's a different energy that you take on. Oof. And then as soon as we go back to the mental chiropractic and being able to walk with someone and what that does, how that shifts, but somehow we confuse ourselves. So that raises the question, which some people close to me have asked, are you sure you want to be working this closely with him? Because <laughs> there is sometimes a heaviness. The thing that you're not seeing maybe, um, it's also, you know, we were sitting here on a particular afternoon. Well, I see the finished product. Yeah, though that's, that's one <laughs> finished product. Um, it also depends on both of our states of mind and body. Um, it is a pretty packed weekend. There's some stress, you know. Um, in the workshop itself, I do get to shine. When there's trust and flow between us, he gets to be fully him. I get to be fully me. And that's my favorite thing. And I really enjoy that. Right. And then, but of course, working so close to him does bring up the risk of being triggered in ways that actually dim my light. So, right. but that again, that's for that's that's cross training for me, to like how um, how can I keep that Hanukkah right. burning no matter what what wind is blowing. Now that said, I don't know that I want to work with him for the rest of my life. Right. I don't think that's ultimately my calling or my destiny. I do think that life has conspired beautifully to put us together on this professional path for a period of time, uh, and I think it's a time that I'll always look back on with gratitude. And something that I can really honor, but it, there is a danger in getting over identified with it um, and trying to ride his current. And I would really the, the life I want is one where I'm I'm creating my own work in the world based on what lights me up. So I'm glad that you can see that. It's a good reminder. No, it's clear. And I was um, it's it's funny because I was pointing it out, and then it happened. I was pointing out that like when it's so obvious, right, that there's the um, the light that shines with something like Walk With Daniel. And I'm not talking about Hello Again or anything specific, but just how much tension exists in the thought of working together, but saying, even though we see that clearly, we can still get confused by it. And then you shared kind of why, mm -hmm. why it gets confusing. And I'm thinking, I always bring back personal experiences, but I had a lot of that with my, with my brother. So I have a, a brother who's several years older than I am, um, a fairly... A presence, personality. Yeah, you know. I, I, I've, I've interacted with him. <laughs> You've once. interacted with him. Okay. Just from a few emails. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, we we both grew up in the same home, but he went to business at a very young age at 17. I stayed in school um, longer than that. I also started my business young, but, you know, he had a, a lot of financial success quickly. And then I ended up in the same industry as him, but not in the same business. And there was this definitely from my side, this competitiveness that kind of, you know, created. And then at some point was, will we work together? Will we not? And that, that didn't quite work. But there was this part of me that felt like maybe I can get to where I want to get um, faster if I work with him. And it just wasn't the case. Every time I tried, there was something that, even though there were certain things that worked out, but it just didn't bring out the... Um, the best in me. Yeah. And at one point in time, I was working with a um, a coach and I just said, you know, my, my identity is so closely connected to his mm -hmm. in this way, either I'm modeling him or rejecting him in mm -hmm. some way. And I just need to break this, this pattern. I just, yeah. there was parts of his personality that were so abrasive to me that I said, I don't wanna be anything like it. And there were parts that were so amazing to me. And I said, I wanna be exactly like it. Yeah. And then there was this constant modeling rejection, modeling rejection. And that's not individuation. Right, and I just had to like break out of that. Yeah. And one day I was listening to a rabbi talk and he said this whole beautiful story of, um, it was a story I heard a million times, but he gave his interpretation of it, where it was Jacob. Um, it said, and Jacob, Jacob was going to meet his brother, Asaph. Yeah, yeah. And it says he prepared for war, right? He came, he came with, I think 400 men carrying gifts and 400 men prepared for war. And he said, whatever you're prepared for, I'm ready for, right? I'm here. We can reconcile and hear your gifts. You wanna fight, I'm ready to fight. But then when they meet, they embrace. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, what happened? I mean, you're talking about one of like 
a fairly bright guy. He prepared for war. He prepared for gifts. It doesn't say anything about either. They just embraced. They fell oh. on each other's necks. Yeah. So he says, well, the one thing that happened in between is the story of Jacob. It says Jacob was alone, and then he wrestled with a man. The man was an angel. Yes. And at the end of this wrestling match, Jacob gave his gave gave him his name. Israel. Israel. Yeah. And he said, so in that story, in that wrestling match, there was the key to why when they eventually met each other, there was peace. And I'll share with you the talk at some point, and I'll also put it in the um, uh, comments or sub notes here, you know, depending on where it's, uh, where it's published. But he, he says what that was, was a, he, the, he was wrestling with himself yes. and his own identity. Yes. And J Jacob's name came from it, one of two things. Either it means the heel, because he was on the heel of Esav, like when he was coming out of the body, they were twins. Mm -hmm. He was pulling at his heel. Mm -hmm. And the other was not the heel of, but that he tricked um, Esav, right? And that was for the birthright. He mm -hmm. tricked him. Both of those names are the identification of his brother. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, they said it no longer applies. It's his relationship with God. It, it's his relationship with God. But then as soon as he gets the name Yisrael, you know what happens? He embraces his brother. He embraces his brother, but then we keep referring to him as Jacob. Mm. Because when he eventually got to that state that he was de-identified with, mm -hmm. he went through that wrestling match, then he was able to go back to that name without the identity of, because Esav represents the struggles. Without going into all those, those details, I was going through this process and I was always kind of like, am I there? Am I there? Am I there? Like, how do I know if I'm there? It's such a tricky place. And mm -hmm. you said earlier, which I love the answer. I love the honesty of it, the mate honesty, where you said, um, I can't answer the question. I'll have to tell you in a year. So I was asking at one point, like, um, I when I was with the coach I worked with, was working at the time. He said, when we're working on something, let's just headline it. And every couple of months we'll check. Yeah. into this. So I see we had three goals. And one of those goals was just, I noticed this pattern of modeling rejection, modeling rejection, modeling rejection, and I want it out. Mm -hmm. And easier said than done. Mm -hmm. So we're going to headline that and work on that. And what it became was really a practice of identity and building up my own identity. And I asked for a sign at one point that I was done, like done with this um, work. And through a very weird sequence of events, and I know you're not a, uh, um, a big fan of... Uh, some of Israel's policies, but this is where the story takes us. It took me to Hebron. Mm -hmm. And in Hebron, you have the, um, the uh, Mar Samach Pela, which you, the, uh, the Cave of the Patriarchs. The Cave of the Patriarchs. Yeah. And it was at night, and I was there, and I know the rabbi in Hebron, and uh, my relative was getting, I think it was his, uh, he was married a few days before, and I said, hey, wouldn't it be cool to take a, a nighttime tour? And he showed us the different things and the history there and everything else. And he said, let me see if I, let me see if I can get us into the cave of the patriarchs. Maybe I know the, even though it's closed, you know, I know one of the, the generals here or someone else. Let me see if I get you guys in. And uh, we came into the patriarchs and then, it, you know, we're standing in front of the Jacob's tomb with the sign. And when I was standing in front of it and I wasn't planning on going, there was zero intention to it. I was like, this is my sign. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Like this struggle that I've been fighting with for so long, modeling rejection, modeling rejection. And what's cool is today we sit down together and I feel none of it. Amazing. None of it. We don't work together um, directly, but we also don't not work together. Right. We work on things together. It's it's irrelevant to me today. Am I working together? Am I not working together? We work on so many things together. Our relationship is, uh, is beautiful today. It's beautiful. Now go do that with your father. Much different. No, much different. Yeah. But I'm not... Um, I'm planting a seed of light. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, putting down in any way. Yeah. I'm. It's is harder. The father. It is. Sure. But I, it's but because brothers but, could be brothers. But I love the story you told, and I think it's really instructive. And and I think I'm. And I'll tell you something. I, I'm you, in that. I'm in that process. You know. I, even Jacob didn't. <laughs> yeah, 